What is going on, Eye of Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about a new study that came out that's actually touching on the circadian rhythm, eating earlier being more beneficial than eating later. And unlike my other video where I tackle body fat loss, this one's actually tackling cardiometabolic health. Is there a correlation between eating earlier within your circadian rhythm when your metabolism is at its peak than eating later? We're going to go ahead and dive into this detailed study. Stay tuned. Okay, so first things first, I love studies like this when they do things that have not been done before in terms of studies within the intermittent fasting or fasting realm. So this study is looking at a massive amount of people. However, there is a limitation. Usually when you can have a massive amount of people connected to a study, it isn't a study that you're actually running yourself. It's usually an observational study. However, this observational study was taken from clinical visits. All of the participants were female and all all of the participants were twins and this kind of gave them a more dynamic look and what happens health wise with your body when looking at those specific markers with the twins it was 625 women and the twins were doing the clinical visits at the same time now this is really really detailed in terms of what they did they didn't just check their blood they didn't just look at their body mass no they wanted to see if there were actual specific genes activating in their body to improve cardiometabolic health simply because they were fasting. There were certain groups that would come in in the afternoon, certain groups that would come in in the morning. The ones that were coming in the morning, they were asked to fast overnight before they came into the clinic. The ones that went into the afternoon, like around 4.30, were asked to stop eating by around nine o'clock. And what they found was that there were benefits when you fast in terms of the gene activation and responsiveness. There were benefits when fasting, but there were way more when fasting, but then eating within that circadian rhythm metabolic peak. Now, this study was super detailed in the fact that they had 226 clinical visits within a 365 calendar year, but in the course of over 20 months. They were able to look at the body in the course of over a 20 month span in which they did 226 visits. All of the women were around the mean age of 58. So the average age was basically 58 of all of the women and all of them were considered healthy in terms of their biological health and their BMI. Now, some of you are probably saying, how did they test their genes? How did they look at gene responsiveness and this is why this is extremely detailed what they did was a punch biopsy and if you don't know what a punch biopsy is you could go ahead and google or search on youtube what a punch biopsy is and hopefully you're not eating when watching that video what they'll do in a punch biopsy is they'll numb an area of the stomach or the back or any of the fatty tissues where there's a good amount of fat they'll numb that area a circular area and then they'll put an instrument that's basically basically sharp at, in a circular format and then they'll punch it into your stomach and it closes at the bottom end kind of like a triangle form and then it pulls out skin and it goes deep enough that it pulls out adipose tissue which is fat tissue and then it's so deep of a cut they have to actually sew that cut back they have to sew because you have a gash right in your stomach or whatever area that they select but because they did this biopsy and all of these people were volunteers they volunteered to do this this allowed them to do an RNA extraction and RNA is a nucleic acid that resides in all of your cells it kind of acts as a messenger for your DNA so you could go ahead and look at that and you can see what genes are being responsive or what genes are being activated and what's happening within the biology of a person by looking at the skin and looking at the adipose tissue these genes are positive genes that are working towards building the health of your body so building the health of your skin and building the health cardio metabolically which was seen in the adipose tissue 300 and 67 genes 367 genes were responding to fasting specifically to fasting viewed in the adipose tissue the fat tissue and 79 genes were responding due to fasting in the skin tissue 79 different genes were responsive to the fact that you're fasting in total 417 genes were identified so there's a correlation in terms of health coming from fasting but the interesting part is that they know 
noticed that when you eat earlier and then fast, it activated more genes that there was more positive activation than if you fasted and ate later. And this is interesting because for a long time, we felt that the longer you wait for your for you to eat, it might be better for you because you're extending your fast. You're burning fat longer, but maybe because the metabolic peak isn't there, it may be affecting you negatively not to eat earlier and then instead eating later. But we don't have many studies yet. However, this is extremely detailed in terms of the actual body, the actual biological study of the body. Looking at the body, doing an RNA extraction to see what's actually happening under the hood is very, very powerful. But of course, this is an observational study and there are many limitations. For example, people wrote their own fasting times, but I feel that if someone is told to fast before they come in to a clinical visit, people usually abide by those fasting times. People usually abide by that and then just eat after. So the information is somewhat still valid. But of course, with observational studies, all these limitations will always be there. You weren't there to actually do the study. You didn't speak to the patients. You're just looking at the results that came from something that already happened in the past. But this is very interesting because they're diving deeper into this circadian rhythm connected to fasting system. They're looking at if you do eat within the circadian rhythm, time frame are you increasing the benefits of your fast as opposed to just eating whenever you want during that eating window i hope more studies come out based on the circadian rhythm with studies like this i would like to see other perspectives in this kind of study like super late eating and and then fasting before that or fasting throughout the day going into the night also they didn't fast for so long they removed people that fasted for about 23 hours so i want to see you know what it is if you fast for 23 hours if you fast for the rest of the day and then eat at night comparable studies to those kind of things just to get more of an idea the same way the other study in terms of burning fat didn't really look at you know comparing someone doing the 16 8 normally without looking at the circadian rhythm just eating whenever and then versus the circadian rhythm they just looked at the 16 8 study with that group using the circadian rhythm so that comparison is important to me is it just that fasting is working or is there some validity to this circadian rhythm system where your metabolic peak is actually boosting everything in your body well if you guys want to look at this study i will have it linked down below and of course i want to thank my patrons from my patreon and i'm going to put their names right up here course guys as always i'll see you on wednesday for another faq peace